Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whoever you are, wherever you're from, welcome back to another exciting episode of Artisan Electrics. And today we are back at the Scooter Place and we are doing a few little things, aren't we, Corey? What are we up to? Uh, so, we are adding some car chargers for their electric vans and we've got to add some more charging points, basically, I think, 13 amp sockets around the factory, um, adding a bit of cable tray along the back and doing a mains change, which is a bit more exciting from the standard to usual job. So. Yeah. So we've got this nice uh, MEM 250 amp TPNN distribution board that's going in to replace that one. It's got 24 ways, so it's nice and big, plenty of room for future expansion. Um, so Corey's going to be ripping out the old one, putting in the new one, and then we've got two 22 kilowatt zappies to go in over there for them to charge the electric vans, which they use to run back and forth to collect the uh, scooters with and, ch and charge up the batteries and scooters and all that. So it's a real green sort of project today. Um, it's going to be good fun. <laughs> We're going to watch Corey get stuck in. Corey's just laughing because we've got a generator, out, a petrol generator outside to give us temporary power for the next two days. That's the only non-green part of this project, unfortunately. Um, but needs must in some situations because we're going to have the power off for a couple of days. So uh, we're going to get stuck in, jump on some time lapses. We'll hopefully zoom in a little bit and show you inside the distribution board. As always, don't forget to smash the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's get into it. So, Corey, um, flash gar, flash, flash, what's it called? Flash bang gear? Flash no. bang gear, I think that's it. Arc yeah. flash. Arc flash headset on. Yeah, I mean. Just in case. So, this main switch underneath here, this is a 200 amp switch fuse. And Corey has isolated it, but he has to do safe isolation to make sure that the buzz bar is dead. So, he's got his proving unit. And then he's just going with his GS38 test leads, checking all combinations to make sure it is actually dead. And the reason he's wearing the flash. Um, flash bang gear and the, the arc flash gear is just in case it wasn't dead if that isolator underneath actually didn't work uh, just by moving his lead in between those two buzz bar chambers could actually cause what's called an arc flash where it, it arcs across and blows up in his face basically and it would be very very nasty so just to be absolutely safe we've got this arc flash helmet and these gloves are arc flash gloves as well. I did get him an arc flash shirt, but he left it at home. What a muppet. <laughs> I mean, it's probably very, very over the top, but it's better to be over the top than dead, isn't it? So. Yeah. So are you so happy that that is safely isolated now, Corey? Yeah, that's safely isolated. So John's um, basically the other workers that are working on here. I've also just witnessed it from behind the camera and I've got their lock on there as well. So everyone's got their own key. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to start work now. Excellent. plan with this Corey? Um, plan is to get everything stripped out and labelled up and that will make putting it back together a whole lot quicker. 
So I'm just, I know it seems like a bit of a waste of time, but I quite like using these cable tags yeah. on anything of this sort of type of job. So I'm just cable tagging it now so that when I put it all back in, it can just, you know, go straight back together. you go basically so that you know exactly what, what's yeah. what. And Other than um, the ones I want to replace the sleeving on because I think it, I don't like using four mil sleeving on such skinny little cable. So we're using this cable craft set today which is, um, is it better than the Helaman Titan ones that we used the I other day? I didn't actually use the Helaman Titan ones, it they was you. They were rubbish. Oh uh, were they? Well these are good, I like these. I was moaning about them all the way through that video so these look better because they're all loose and you've got a whole like nice kit basically with with them in, so that's quite good. And they were not that expensive. I think they were the same price as the Helm and Titan ones, but you get way more of them. So that was, yeah, that's nice. Nice that they've given you plenty of slack. Yeah, they've actually given us loads, which is rare. It's going to be a sweet little job. And is this DB schedule actually accurate? It seems to be, so yeah. far, yeah. That's good. So, so I was you know, writing it out as I was going, but I don't really... Don't yeah, so to. then are you just labelling them up for the same circuit numbers that they were in before? Exactly, yeah, because I don't know if, the, if whoever designed it put the phases where they were for a reason. Yeah, to know. avoid, like, dangerous touch voltages between well, two four items. Four L's heaters. Yeah, four L2, first floor heater, right, yeah. So this is 120 mil bi-rated uh, so it's really flexible you see that it's like really fine stranded so it's great for doing what we're doing here where you're running it and trunking and you've got some fairly tight bends to do I've hired this so this is an electric crimper and basically what we do is just pop it around here like so I think I'll put the heat shrink on first oh, that'll, that'll fit over anyway so that's fine um, but gotta get the dies Generator doesn't like that heat heat gun. Yeah. 
There we go. One nice solid crimp connection. Right, Corey, how's it going? Yeah, fine. I've got it all stripped out. I think I'm gonna make some changes, just where cables are a little bit short. Some of the circuits, you've got loads of slack. Some of them, you've got nearly no slack. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, um, for all the lighting circuits that are coming down and into this switch, I'm gonna replace this for uh, galvanized trunking. And I'm just gonna come straight down into the top of the switch, rather than going kind of through. And it'll just make it a bit neater. Lights are flickering. Someone's running the microwave. Ah, yeah. <laughs> It'll make it a lot neater, basically. So you won't have as many cables coming through. They'll just come down, and we'll just have the feeds to the switches coming through. Brilliant. So I've, uh, I've labelled all the switch returns just so I can keep everything on the same circuit. Sometimes in warehouses and things, you get what's called the stroboscopic effect, which is where um, if you've got things on the same phase, like motors or whatever, you can have things flickering yeah. um, in sequence. So um, I'm presuming that the designer would have put everything in place on whatever phase for a reason. Yeah. So basically, I'm just trying to try and keep it the same. So I've just tagged them all up and taken pictures. Good move. It's all that labeling and detail that takes a little bit of time at the start, but it's a lifesaver later on, isn't it? Once you get cracking, because you know what's what and you can just plow, you can plow on them. Yeah, definitely. Some of the cables weren't labelled, but I think I should be able to figure most of them out because it's twin and earth. Um, and for the singles, I'm just sort of going to use process of elimination and probably have to test a few of them. So while Corey's doing that, we've got Dan and John working on this cable tray. They're just running, running this cable tray all the way round. And we're going to just use it to run a, a cable to a new socket over there basically at the moment so it's only going to have one cable on it but it's going to future proof it because later on when the um, the operation expands here we're going to be adding some more of these uh, 32, uh, 16 amp commando three phase sockets for more chargers all the way around that's another reason why we're upgrading the board because there's going to be quite a lot of heavy loads going on here so these guys are just going to have to uh, fabricate a special little bend around here with a set down because that drops down by about 50 centimeters or so and then they're going to run it along here run something around that column there over the door just above that emergency light and then they'll end it there at that column and just run down the wall and put a couple of metal clad double sockets on there so that they've got a bit of power on this side to run their tools and stuff because They've got like a little maintenance workshop here basically where they 
are running in, um, you know, running all their tools to maintain any scooters and bikes which are uh, out of order. So it's quite a big operation here, as you can see, and it's growing quite fast. Lots and lots of scooters and lots and lots of bikes. So plenty of juice. And what they've got is these electric vans. So we're going to be putting two zappies, one on the wall there and one on the wall there, either side of the window. Two 22 kilowatt, so three phase zappies, which will be charging their electric vans. So outside there, they've got a couple of electric vans, which they use to deliver the uh, scooters to the right locations and pick them up and do all the things that they need to do. So those electric vans are quite important and we're going to have the opportunity to juice them up at uh, 22 kilowatts, which should give them a nice quick charge. So that's a little tour of the warehouse. Basically, just mounted the board um, and all the cutting, all the containment and things, got it all ready. Um, I'm using 50 mil um, couplers, basically, just to bring all the cables in neatly to there. Because I think a few of these, lots of these have got loads of length, and then a few don't really have any length to get to where they need to go to. Um, the main tails I've pulled in, these are 120 mil, 
I think they're tri-rated, um, really nice actually, flexible tails, e super easy to work with. Um, so we've crimped all those, heat shrink them into place, mounted the main switch, got the main earth lugged up and in place. So yeah, we're doing all right. We're just prepping this bit of trunk in here at the minute. We've got the surge protector in place, um, just sort of roughly. Um, but yeah, still loads to go and time is marching on. So yeah, trying to crack on. They're all coming through to this buff bar chamber here, which we'll, we'll make off shortly. Yeah. Looking good, mate. Really nice and neat. Cheers. So it's end of day one. Uh, how do you feel it's gone so far, Corey? Yeah, it's been all right. A little bit frustrating. I don't really feel like I was able to really get my head into it, um, just because there's loads going on. And obviously we're working around the staff as well, trying to keep them with a certain amount of power from the generator. Um, but okay, I'm fairly, I'm, I'm happy with how it's all looking. It's looking nice. Um, yeah, I, re I reckon tomorrow we'll have this. We'll have this powered up hopefully. Yeah, devil's in the detail, isn't it? It's always getting the little bits of attention to detail, like with the trunking, all these bushes and couplers and everything, just trying to get it looking the best you can possibly get it and being as practical as possible for cabling up. Because now that you've got all that trunking around the edge, that's going to make it a lot easier to dress the cables neatly when it comes to actually connecting the board up. So, yeah, exactly. Should be nice. Yeah, if you're happy, I'm happy. Happy, happy. Yeah, these look beautiful as well. And a uh, nice little swoop there. Were they nice to work with, these bi rated tails? Yeah, they're actually really, really easy. They're just so flexible, aren't they? Yeah, 120 mil. Very, very fine stranded copper. Expensive stuff that is, but uh, nice. Great, so end of day one. I was, was gonna add another, um, another chunk in there specifically for the tails and just thought actually do you know what once we straighten these out as well you've got loads of room in there and i think it looks better just having the one go underneath the round so that's why we've kind of stuck those there and kept them in there yeah it will it will look neat that way i think, think. we're yeah. going to tidy up all the switch all the switching and fire alarm stuff that was here we're going to tidy up as well i would have liked to have got rid of that trunk in and replaced all of that for metal really but Obviously, not really part of the job spec. No, yeah. At least what we've touched a little bit. Yep. So tomorrow, two five core six mil armoureds going in for some zappies over there somewhere in the dark. This cable tray is nearly finished um, over here. It's just this little tricky corner that we've got to do like a funny little set to the side on. That didn't quite get done. Um, and then just get the cable in for the sockets over there. So. That's a little bit to do tomorrow and then uh, all good. See you tomorrow.